So today we're going to be talking about calculations involving significant figures. Before we do, though, a couple quick questions. Why do we even bother with significant figures? I mean, what good are they? What are they all about? Another question is, okay, so my calculator gives an answer of 14.20098712. How much of that am I supposed to write down? That's going to come up again and again. Just because your calculator gives an answer like that doesn't mean you should be writing that whole thing down. So it's all about precision. Precision in measurements. And the question is, can we get our calculations to reflect the same level of precision in our answers as we had in the measurements that went into those calculations? Let me explain. Here's a rectangle, and let's say we want to figure out its length. So we use a ruler, and we use a very cheap ruler to begin with. It's only got a 0 and a 10 for the centimeters. And with all that, that's all we've got going. We can maybe call this an 8. Someone else might say 8 centimeters. Someone else might say it's a 7 or a 9, but we're going to say 8. That's a guess. One significant figure, not a very precise measurement at all. If we want it to be more precise, we need more increments like we have down there now. So that being the case, now we can do better than 8. We can see maybe 8.3. Now we're sure of the 8, and we're guessing the 3. Still centimeters. Do even better than that. We need a more sophisticated, a more precise measuring equipment, and uh, there it is. See these extra increments that are in there now? Now we can do 8.33 centimeters. That's even better. Each of these better than the previous one. That now has three significant figures. It's more precise. I'm going to turn this uh, rectangle sideways and measure its height. And um, that might be, what, 3.98 or so? 3.99 centimeters? So those are measurements. There's uncertainty in them in that last place. So what could we use these for? We could use them to figure out the area of the rectangle. And I'll remind you that area is width times height. So if I multiply those two things together, 3.98 centimeters times 8.33 centimeters on the calculator, it'll show 33.1534, and the units would be square centimeters. It's an area. But do you, do you really feel comfortable writing down 33.1534? Let me remind you that in 3.98, there was uncertainty in the 8. One place, that's all you're allowed, one uncertain digit. 8.33, again, that last digit's uncertain. If I write down 33.1534, it implies I'm sure of all those digits except for the very last one, the 4. Well, here's the problem with that. Let's say I, instead I had measured to be 3.97 and 8.32 for the two measurements, and those are consistent. Notice how they only are different in those last places, and that means they're consistent. Well, I get an answer when I multiply those two that's consistent with 33.1534, maybe 5. No, I don't get anything close to that. Hey, that's pretty close. It's got the 33. It looks like we're sure of the 33. After that, though, it starts to change. 0 0.0 is 3, 0, 4. Those are different in the last four, and we're not allowed, we're not allowed four guesses, just one. If I go in the other direction, maybe measure a little bit on the larger side, 3.99, 8.34. Again, those are consistent. See how they're only different in the last place. Look what I get. Again, something that has what looks like four guesses. We're not allowed four guesses, just allowed one. So to have our answers show the same degree of precision as our measurements did, we need to round them off. Again, in that third place. So apparently, three significant figures is all I can get. For the first one as well, 33.0, 33.2, that would be what, 33.3? .3? And notice how those are all consistent. They only vary in that last place. So it looks like multiplying, we're going to have just the number of significant figures in our answer that we had in our measurement. How about division? Well, we could calculate the ratio of width divided by height. Um, here's an example, the exact same numbers, except now we're dividing. And by the way, when you divide centimeters divided by centimeters, there'll be no unit on these. They would cancel out. Here are the numbers I get in the calculator. Again, notice something. The first two digits are consistent. 0 0.47, 0 0.47. We seem like we know it's 0 0.47. Then it starts to change. Look at all the guesses. And by the way, the dot, 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 it didn't end there. That's just where the calculator ended. It went beyond that. I hope we don't feel comfortable writing down that entire number because look at that. To write down 0 0.47716362 implies I'm certain of all those digits if I had Larry last two, and that's just not the case. Instead, let's round them off to these numbers. 
and those are consistent. Notice how they only vary in that last place. So what appears to be the rule here is when multiplying or dividing, if their measurements each have three sig figs, let's round our answer off to three sig figs. Or if the measurements each had two sig figs, we would need to round our answer off to two sig figs. Or five sig figs, the answer should have five. The level of precision in the answer should reflect the level of precision in the measurement. So let's try some practice problems here. We'll start off with this one. And for these, if you want to pause the video and try these out and see if you get the right answers, all you have to do is use a calculator and round correctly. On this first one, I got 12.5 centimeters times A2.7 centimeters. The calculator gives 1033.75 units will be square centimeters. How many significant figures should we have? Well, each of our numbers here had three significant figures. How would this be round to three significant figures? You might be thinking 103. Now remember, this is 1,033. So the correct answer would be 1,030. Remember, this last zero here does not count as a significant figure. These are the three significant figures. That has a level of precision that matches the level of precision in these. Three sig figs, three sig figs. Next problem, a two sig fig times a two sig fig. 5.6 times 7.9. Calculator gives an answer of 44.24. It's square millimeters this time. Doesn't matter. How many sig figs should be in my answer? This one has two. This one has two. Just look at these first two. That's right. 44 square millimeters. 6.734 times 9.002. Four sig fig. Four sig fig. Calculator gives a ridiculous answer of 60.619468. But if this has four significant figures, and this does, we need to round it off. 60.6 and the 1 should go up to a 2, 60.62 square meters. How about dividing? 4.3 grams divided by 709 millers. This is two significant figures. Remember, this is also two. That zeros doesn't count. Zeros at the end don't count if there's no decimal point. There's our calculator answer. 0 0.00544303. Two sig figs, two sig figs. Don't forget, by the way, these zeros don't count. Zeros at the beginning of a number never significant. So five, four, there it is, 0 0.0054, and the units would be grams per milliliter. That's a density unit. Last one, 8.52 meters divided by 2.13 seconds. This one's kind of interesting. The calculator answer in this case is just four. The units would be meters per second. Well, wait a second, though. This has three significant figures. This has three. Our answer should have three. And as it's written right now, it just has one. Here's one of those very rare situations where you don't want to round this answer off. You want to extend it. You want to say, no, I want something more precise, not less precise. So what's more precise than four? It would show three significant figures. Hopefully, you're thinking 4.00. Those zeros at the end are significant because there's a decimal point present meters per second. That's a velocity. But here's a question. What should we do when the number of significant figures and the numbers we're multiplying or dividing don't agree? For instance, what if we have a two sig fig number, we multiply it by a three sig fig number? Hmm. That's not as contrived as it might seem. What if I took that exact same rectangle, 8.33 centimeters long, but now I made it much skinnier. It's only, uh, what about 0.53 centimeters wide? So that's a three sig fig number and a two sig fig number. Well, area calculation. There are some possibilities for the width of it and the height of it. What will we get then for the area? So here's what I want you to do. And you might be want to put your prediction down on a piece of paper. We multiply a number precise to two sig figs by another number that's precise to three sig figs. How many sig figs should be in our answer? Now, the answer is either going to be three, go with the bigger one, two, Go with the smaller one. You can't really have it be two and a half. That would seem like a compromise, but how do you do two and a half significant figures? Hmm. So, you got your prediction written down? Let's check this out. Let's see what we get when we multiply these out and see. We get 4.3264, 4.4149, and 4.5036. So apparently, we only are sure of the four and what comes after that is our guess. So it seems that when we multiply a two significant figure number by a three significant figure number, we should be rounding all our answers off to just two significant figures. The weaker measurement. 
There's an expression, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. It applies here in calculations. A calculated value should only be as precise as its least precise component. Same with ratio, by the way. Dividing. Take those exact same numbers and divide them. Look what you get. 0 0.0625, and that really does stop there. Um, but the other ones go on indefinitely off the calculator. Remember, those first zeros are not significant. So the very first that number that's there, other than zero, is a six. And it looks like we agree on that, but after that we start to lose it. So once again, it looks like we have to round these numbers off to just two significant figures to have them be consistent. By consistent, I mean agreeing in everything except for that last place. A two significant figure number divided by a three significant figure number apparently should just have two significant figures. So, here's the rule then. When you multiply and divide, round your answer off to the lower number of significant figures, the weaker link. Some more practice ones. Here's 318.2 centimeters times 82.7 centimeters. Calculator gives an answer of 26,331.68. But what should we round that to? We got a four sig fig number and a three sig fig number. How many sig figs should be in our answer? Three. So, look at the two, the six, and the three. Please don't think the answer is 263. If it's 26,000, we have to keep that magnitude. It's going to be 26,300. Remember, those zeros at the end don't count. Square centimeters. 5.7 millimeters times 213.6 millimeters. Calculator, 1,217.52. Now, this involves a two sig fig number times a four sig fig number. Our answer should have two significant figures. What should it be then? The one and the two? Not 12, but 1,200. Remember, your answer has to have the same magnitude as the calculator answer. It just doesn't have the same level of precision. 1,200, maybe 1,300. Just the one's certain, the two's our guess. 0 0.0034, just two sig figs, times 8.12. That's three sig figs. Our calculator gives that answer, but we should only have how many? Three or two? Just two significant figures? And so we should have 0 0.028. The zeros don't count. Two we know, the eight because the seven rounds up. How about dividing? Seven grams divided by 1,842.6 milliliters. That's a one sig fig number divided by a five sig fig number. The weak, the weak link, the one sig fig number. Calculator answer? Very precise, but the calculator doesn't know better. It takes it always it always takes you literally. Okay? It assumes all these numbers are perfect, and they're not. They're all they all have a level of, of uh, uncertainty in them. So just one sig fig, 0 0.004. The three would round up. Grams per milliliter. And we saw this before. 1850 meters divided by 3.7 seconds. 1850 has three significant figures. That's zero at the end doesn't count. 3.7 has two. Our answer should have two significant figures. But what do we get for an answer? 500. That's what the calculator says. And that has only one significant figure. How are we going to show that that 500 should have two significant figures? We're going to write it with a line over that zero. That indicates that that's 500 to two significant figures. So there it is. Calculations involving multiplying and dividing. Adding and subtracting follow a different set of rules. We're going to cover that in a different video.